Hello, gentlemen. I'm going to show you folks how to make a pretty neat little animation here. I love this animation. It's only one and a quarter seconds, but every bone moves and it really covers a lot of concepts. I wanted to do myself justice because the last animation tutorial I did was kind of janky. It was just such an odd animation to commentate on, and there was just too much going on for me to cover it well in 10 minutes. We have a 43 bone model today and some center of gravity changes during its movements. Playing the animation back slowed down for you, we can dissect it a little bit. We have the pushback, the kickoff, momentum build, and here we get both feet contact again so we can continue momentum above the waist and lunge the pole arm forward. If you're looking closely, there are a few things wrong with this animation, but if it were easy, I wouldn't be making a tutorial on it. We start off the same way as always with a starting pose. We have a very odd starting pose here, as you can see from my reference art. I hide all groups that aren't important right now, that being anything above the waist. Take a look at my grouping hierarchy to see how I think the best human bone structure should be for block bench. The arms will remain hidden for most of this animation. They are subject to inertia changes from the feet first, then the body, so they are last to move, I guess you could say. The head also applies to this logic, but a person generally maintains more consistent control over their head than they do their hands. I've been getting one or two people, I think it was just one person, uh, but I've been seeing people complaining that I speed up my videos too much and it's a little hard to follow. Uh, I do not make beginner tutorials. There's a lot of people out there who can explain the basics a lot better than I can. Um, I'm expecting that whoever's watching this right now knows block bench well enough that when I try to do something, you'll be able to follow it. I make a slight change of my plans to make the pole arm face straight forward and only move and rotate along the x-axis. This will make more dynamic movements a lot easier to keep track of later on. We begin our aforementioned kickoff here. The main grouping of the model will move somewhat as to be sure that the center of the foot that is touching the ground every keyframe uh, doesn't look like the model is sliding around. In hindsight, rotate the main grouping, for my model it's named waist, as few times as possible uh, so you don't end up with what looks like a little jitter at your point of contact when you try to center it at the original location. Someone might end up asking in the comments if you'll ever be able to see a speed model of this guy because he looks fucking awesome. Uh, sadly, no. I didn't record a second of this process because I've been chipping away at this model for the past two months in maybe five minute intervals or so, so recording it would have been a nightmare. That's also why I haven't been posting any videos, I'm just in the point of my life where extended periods of time that I can dedicate to a hobby like this just isn't an option. I have taken note of the channel's growth in my absence, and if people really do like this junk, I'll try to take more time off for it. And uh, notice while our character returns his left foot to the ground, you may notice me pausing a lot. I get up from my chair and do the movements I want to make in person. If there's a video online, that's great too, but Nothing gives you an understanding that mimicking the physical motion does. Uh, doing this did make me feel a little goofy though.
and we are beginning day two of the animation process. And what a stopping point we were given. This is a killer key pose in my opinion. Our primary goal now is to get those arms to fly forward and bring the pull arm with it. What the overall process is going to be will be first making key points that rough out where the arms should be, again using my own movement as reference. From there, I'm going to move out the halberd to match those keyframes, then going over the arms and hands again for some revisions. This is the part of the video that, um, uh, where I usually just kind of let things like play out. I'll mention that I again have the legs, then body, then arms move mentality, which gives the character a little bit of momentum. I don't know if this is some kind of art or anatomy thing or something, but it makes it look better. And that wraps up the animation. Let's get a good look at it again. And once more in slow motion. The tutorial is over now, so it's just gonna be me talking here for a little bit. To start, a very late thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I'm really happy I can help people out with stuff like this. It lets me know I'm not just wasting my time. Also, the game I was a character artist for in my most popular videos, the guy with the hoodie and the blue hair lady, I am no longer working on it. The game developer and I had some major creative differences and some communications issues, and I am no longer affiliated with the project in any way. There's no drama or anything like that, it's just that I wanted to make different models more than I wanted to get paid to make his. Anyways, I apologize for being away for so long. I'm sure you've missed me very much. Uh, that's not to say I haven't been working on anything. I mean, I did make this cool guy, right? I kind of just made him to get back into the groove after being away from Block Bench for so long. A developer is working with me to make a game, one that I have full artistic direction over and some direction over gameplay. So that's what I've been working on. I don't have anything to showcase for that right now, but I should in the near future. Well, that wraps us up. Thank you.